All right, what's up, DVW fam? We got a very exciting video coming up for you guys. We are currently in the south of Spain, Malaga, and we're not here alone. We got a special guest for you guys, a local tour guide here, Hanny. Here I am. Awesome, yeah. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thanks nice for having to meet us. You. Thank you for coming. Awesome. So we are in Malaga right now. It is beautiful. Hanny here is an expert in all things Malaga, and this is the south of Spain and in every part of Spain there's different foods and cuisines and today what are we well, going to do today? Well today over the next couple of days actually we're going to do a bit of a tour of Malaga's gastronomy so we're going to stop uh, at different types of places that you can get tapas and food and wine and today specifically our first stop is a wine tasting in Vinoteca Los Patios de Beatas. It uh, has Malaga's biggest wine selection. You can buy wines by the glass there that you can't buy anywhere else. Uh, and they're going to pair it with some delicious, typical Malaga tapas for us as well. All right, super excited to show you guys Malaga. So without further ado, let's go. Let's go. The cool thing about eating and drinking in Europe is after or before your meal, you can walk off some of the calories with beautiful views and streets, just like we're doing now. True. Yeah, yeah, Malaga is pretty lot. beautiful. We walk a lot in, in, uh, in Europe in general, mm -hmm. uh, but you're right, Malaga is a particularly beautiful place to do it. Check out this bar right here. Let's go. All right guys, so we're at our first place on this tour. This mm -hmm. place looks amazing. Can you tell us a little bit about this wine bar restaurant? Yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it is actually. Vinoteca Los Patios de Beata. So Vinoteca is a, is a wine shop, a wine bar. And here they have one of uh, Malaga's largest selections of wines by the bottle, by the glass, uh, paired with beautiful tapas. So one thing that I was just explaining to Dan is that here in Spain, we don't drink wine without eating at the same time. The two things go hand in hand. And we very rarely eat without drinking wine as well, to be honest. So um, yeah, we're gonna do exactly that here. That's awesome, yeah. We're gonna get wine and dine, food and drinks, all throughout Spain. Been having a blast. Exactly. So this machine is uh, unique to Vinoteca Los Patios Beatas in Malaga. It's called an Ergomatic. And it's really cool because what it means is that you can try lots and lots of different wines just in taster. So you can try each of these wines in three different measures. So you can try a small taster, um, you can try a small glass or a large glass. Uh, and it just gives you so much variety of wines that you can taste that you wouldn't necessarily be able to taste by the glass in other places. Can't get enough of the jamón cunny experience. They cut it fresh off the leg, so that's how you know you're getting the freshest of the fresh jamón with your tapas and vino. It's a very delicate process. There's an art to this. You have to cut it very particularly to get the best slices. Wow, guys, look at this plate. Look how beautifully marbled it is. Oh my goodness. Master Hamon slicer right here. Right now we're going to make a beautiful pairing with a local wine made of our most beautiful grape that we have it in the area, that is the Muscat. The Moscatello. 
So we're going to find a beautiful texture, very really glycetic, even velvety. The nose, if you can smell it, honey, it's going to be a wonderful uh, exotic fruit. Yeah. Uh, really tropical. Really tropical. Yeah. yeah. And if you taste it, you will feel the attack of the entrance. It's a little bit sweet, but at the end, how the idea was to make a dry wine. Yeah. The acidity is still really wild. Yeah. So at the end, the feeling is fruit. Mm. Okay, Delicious. not sweetness. Very so I get that it's really umami. And also with the watermelon, the texture salty of the, uh, of the jamón, and also the cooler of the, the sweetness of the ice cream can be a beautiful time. Thank you. Salud. Thank you. All right, all right. We're getting the full wine tasting experience here in Malaga. With a typical tapa. Yeah, the presentation is amazing. It's the stunning. chef came out and just explained this dish to us. It looks like art, just like everything else in this place. It's really yeah. elegant. It is. But yeah, how about you tell us uh, how we're going to do bit this? about what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. So, first of all, we have this beautiful uh, local wine. It's from a town called Torox, which is in Malaga province. Um, and it's using the Muscat grape, the Moscatel grape, which is really, really typical to hear. Uh, we just saw some old photos of them picking the grapes. Uh, it's very, very uh, renowned. Malaga's renowned for this Muscatel grape. So we make beautiful sweet wines with it, but they're also making more modern wines. And Julian actually um, has started his own bodega, his own winemakers, and they are creating this uh, Torox wine. So it's a dry Muscatel, but if you smell it, tell me what you think. Fruity? Smells fruity, for sure. Mm -hmm. So Torox is on a part of the coast called the Costa Tropical, because we have such an amazing climate there. They grow mangoes, they grow pineapples, so you can really get those notes in the grape. Have a little taste and see what you think. All right, cheers. Cheers. I've already drunk half of mine. <laughs> Oh my goodness. First time in Malaga, in the south, I've been trying a lot of mid and northern wines. This one definitely has way fruitier notes, a little bit sweeter. Yeah. Uh huh. Sweeter, but with that kind of dry, uh, nice, mm. crisp end. Yes. And dry. It's gonna go perfectly well with this tapa. Mm -hmm. So, so our tapa is um, apple blanco, which means it actually means white garlic. So it's a cold soup. Uh, but as you can see, it's this bright white color. It's not like gazpacho or one of the ones that perhaps you're more familiar with or that you've seen in other places. It's very, very typical to Malaga. And the main ingredient is not, as the name suggests, garlic. It is actually almond. So here in the south, we have an abundance of Marcona almonds growing wild out in the mountains amongst the, all the olive trees that we have. Um, and it makes this delicious, delicious soup by mixing the almond with a tiny bit of garlic and some water. Now, of course, we're in Patios de Riatas, so it's not as simple as a basic almond soup. They put these beautiful melon balls with uh, ham on uh, with them and then an apple ice cream as well, apple melon ice cream as well. Wow. So we're in for a treat. It's going to be a good one. I'm going right. to say dive in. You go first. How about we go together? Okay, let's do it yes. together. Mm. Oh my goodness. It's so good. <laughs> that was confusing for a taste bud. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought it was like a soup, but it's a cold soup. Mm -hmm. It's icy and these melon balls are just super fresh. The fruit here that I've had have been amazing. I love yeah. the tomatoes here, the produce. That, that melon just pops with sweetness. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm getting that this Vinoteca is very chef driven, like you said. So all these tapas are going to be up Top there. Notch. Yeah, extra yeah. for sure. Yeah. Extra, extra tapas. Exactly. Extra. <laughs> I'm going in again. So good. Definitely taste that those almonds and that's what I'm guessing too that there's a lot of almonds in Spain because I've tried mazapan mm -hmm. also like a, an yeah. almond dessert yeah uh, the, alm the almonds here are great but yeah very nice and refreshing for this southern Malaga heat because it is a walking it's outside it's warming <laughs> and it's super refreshing with the melon too oh my gosh definitely a vibrant flavor so far I'm getting a very you know, fruity, tropical, and sweet touches from the wine and just the food. So yeah, let's keep moving on. So me and Hanny here are sharing this delicious plate, and I didn't think twice about it because, you know, I'm used to this. But Hanny was saying here in Spain that um, other people in Spain also don't mind um, eating in this type sharing. of fashion as well. Yeah, it's really, really common. In fact, more often than not, 
you will find that if you go out with friends or family in Spain, you're going to be sharing from the same plates. And that is kind of what tapas is all about. You know, we have a verb to do tapas, tapear, which means sharing from plates and, and eating in this really like collaborative, sharing way. And so, yeah, I know that in the UK, it's definitely not normal that you would share a bowl of soup and both dive in with, with your spoons, but here it's totally normal. And luckily Dan gets it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sharing is caring. Sharing and is caring. Yeah, I'm getting like, there's a culture of you know openness and closeness here for lack of a better word because I saw Hanny do um, a Spanish greeting earlier and it was just it was very uh, loving and caring <laughs> yeah the, the yeah. double cheek kiss yeah. yeah yeah in fact that's how I that's how I greeted you right yeah exactly <laughs> never met before but that's how we do it yeah <laughs> well we are open a wine that has only 20 years old Okay, think about it, where were you around 20 years ago, okay? <laughs> that one is a mountain wine. We just do on the mountains of Malaga, and it's a seco, dry, tras añejo. Tras añejo means more than old. And if you see the color, it's like a brandy. Yeah. The wine is stayed for 20 years in Casa Folk. Oxidized slowly like a sherry type, like a oloroso, or like a palo cortado. Mm -hmm. This one goes perfect with the jamón, because the jamón is marinated, and also salty dry, and hanging for another five years. And you know that the jamón eats acorn. So the acorn, normally the nutty taste, but the almond taste also have the flavor at the end, like the oak. Oh man. Um. <laughs> I feel so spoiled being here with Hanny and also just being in Spain in general. This is more of like a top-notch experience, but I've been um, like I've been to a couple restaurants and this is pretty much standard. Just really good jamón, really yeah. good wine, and depending on where you go, uh, pretty good value as well because they make all their wines here, so they don't have that importing tax on it. So exactly. love that, but. Guys, I've had a lot of jamón ibérico, the best of the best in Spain. This is gold standard. Yeah, but I've never had it presented so beautifully. The That's stunning. Yeah, he did an amazing job. As well in this Look at the marbling. Looks like a flower petal. It's beautiful. It so look at the deep color of it. It's just such a gorgeous color. It's like this golden. Um, yeah, like some of the sherries, perhaps you maybe have tried a wine this kind of color. It's so gorgeous. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what, it gets that color from the barrels. So this actually is made with a white grape, uh, but it takes that dip, depth of color from the barrel through that aging process. So let's have a little taste of it. I think the, the combination of this with the jamón is gonna be amazing. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, you've learned to tap on the table. Oh, man. What do you think of that? That is unique. When you, you smell it, there's a strong aroma from it. It tastes a lot of oak in this mm -hmm. from the, the barrel. It almost reminds me of like a really, really sweet and light whiskey. Whiskey is also yeah, barrel actually, aged. You know, yeah, whiskey, some brandies as well. This, mm -hmm. The Spanish brandies have this kind of take on this kind of flavor and quality mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, but it also has like a fruity touch. Oh, it's so delicious because I'm actually a really big fan of whiskey. Some people don't like whiskey, but it's so good. I'm gonna grab one of these really marble pieces in the middle. So, you take your pick. You can do, oh, okay, yeah. inner pick. Look at this, guys. <coughs> Look at this, so marbled. All right. Mm -hmm. mm. The fat just melts. I gotta take a little edge piece right here. Oh, um, special. I'm going to go for a middle one now. Love a beer with ham. It's cured. So like the texture is still a bit crunchy hard, but it's so fatty and marbleized that it still melts in your mouth. Mm -hmm. It's like the Wagyu of ham. Mm -hmm. If you guys haven't kept up with my Spain series and you guys don't know about Iberico ham, it's like the best of the best quality. You know ham here, Iberico ham is like a, like a type of pork 
that they, they raise here? Yeah, so the Iberian pig is a breed of pig breed of that's pig. reared on the Iberian Peninsula, which is here in Spain and Portugal. Mm -hmm. It's a big fat black pig. Yeah. It's delicious. Uh, but it's also reared under really, uh, it's heavily regulated industry, so they have to be fed on a really good quality diet. Uh, a you know they're, they're kind of free range or semi free range that they're, they're well looked after they're happy happy pigs and you can taste it the proof is in the eating for oh, sure man. it's this is so good mm. Mm -hmm. what a combo with that wine yeah they're both quite rich mm -hmm. but they just work together so well i like the dryness of these wines too mm -hmm. i'm actually a fan of dry wines this is like fruity a little bit sweet and also very dry mm -hmm. This, this ham, I can't get enough of it. I can eat this whole plate by myself. It's like ham candy, guys. <laughs> Dan, you're not going to be short on ham over the next couple of days. We've, mm -hmm. got, we've got more ham coming. Yeah. Trust me. This is a gyoza of, um, of monk fish with a shrimp uh, white uh, from Malaga. We make like a gazpachuelo, it's a typical soup from, uh, from Malaga. And we use the, the soap of the fish and mayonnaise but we put a little bit of uh, ají amarillo from from peru mm -hmm. and oil from uh, plankton marino okay enjoy amazing this is dominio de arenas this one is completely dry we yeah. try first the fruity one that one is the dry and mineral we're to the highlands of the city of mala mm -hmm. okay the altitude is around 800 meters above the sea yes the soil is poor rock Wow. So that mineral, that is slate, is what the wine gets. The aroma is completely white flowers, okay? yeah. so intense, mm -hmm. really low in alcohol, around 12 and a half. Mm -hmm. okay? So we're going to find a wine completely dry that is going to be perfect, just with the gazpachuelo. Gazpachuelo. Mm. Great. Thank Enjoy you. It. Thank you. I almost feel guilty, like, touching these plates because... Right. It's like an art piece. It's so in beautiful. Food. Yeah, yeah. It's so beautiful. What they do here in Patios de Beatas is they take a typical Malaga dish and then they put their own spin on it. So Camilo has, uh, he's uh, from Colombia and he has Latin American roots, obviously. So he puts little touches of Latin America in here. So this plate is called Gaspachuelo, except to a person from Malaga, a Malagueño, they would look at this and say it's not Gaspachuelo because Camilo's done something so creative with it. So a gazpachuelo, a typical gazpachuelo in Malaga is a, is a soup, a warm soup, a fish soup, fish stew effectively, um, with potatoes and seafood and fish, uh, made with a broth that has mayonnaise added. So it sounds bizarre, homemade mayonnaise, it's beautiful, it's creamy, it's delicious. So the broth essentially is the basis of a gazpachuelo, but what he's done is instead of putting whole pieces of seafood in there and fish, He's made gyosas, steamed dumplings with monkfish and white prawns from Malaga. So wow. real, like beautiful prawns from here. Little bits of samphire on top and then finished with that broth that he cooked the seafood in uh, with the mayonnaise and also a touch of ají amarillo, which is the yellow ají from, uh, from, from Peru and some uh, plankton oil. Mm. So there you go, an extra, an extra bit of seafood in there. Right. Yeah, I think it's going to have to go in in one. There's no breaking One bite it. Mm. Oh my freaking god. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> Honestly, it's crazy like my experience here in Spain because if you guys know like from my channel, I'm a big carnivore. I go Korean barbecue all day, every day, just eat steaks, meat. <laughs> but I never thought I'd be raving about like just vegetables, produce, like olive oil, tomatoes, just the simple ingredients that make yeah. these dishes so good. But it's just like all the fresh ingredients and uh, the gyoza itself, I'm assuming it's cooked with Spanish olive oil, mm -hmm. which I've been really appreciating. So nice yeah. lubrication on mm -hmm. the shell. And the inside is really soft in that monkfish. And you don't get like oceany fishy taste because it's just so fresh. It's so fresh. So, so this, fresh. this is locally sourced. So we're going to visit the market tomorrow, which you are going to flip out. I don't know if you've been to a market since you've been in Spain yet. Have you been to a produce market, central I market? I have, but probably not a, a, a great one. It won't be like Malaga. Yeah. It won't be like Malaga. Mm -hmm. I might be biased, but Malaga has definitely one of the best markets in, in the whole country because we have so much produce there that's locally sourced. And you can taste it when you eat the food here in Malaga. 
you know, even the most simple food, this isn't simple of course, this is very elaborate and very elegant and beautiful, but even the most simple food, you can really taste how uh, fresh the ingredients are and how yeah. it's all locally sourced. So yeah, you're gonna love it when we go to the market tomorrow. Yes, I'm gonna drink this, this soup. It's just, the soup is wow. so good. And can you believe it's got mayonnaise in it? I mean that. Yeah. A little bit like tart, a little mm. bit sour, mm -hmm. salty. Rich from olive oil, that's crazy. I never thought I would want to drink olive oil, but my friend the other day, we had olive oil with our jamon, and he's like, oh, this is liquid gold, I can't leave it behind, and he actually drank it. And it's, wow. it's just that good. The, okay, I mean, it's very oil. good for your skin. Yeah. <laughs> he'll be looking young when he's 90, he'll be look, looking 50. Okay, we haven't tried the wine yet, I don't think, yeah, have we? So this is to pair with it. Cheers. Salud. Salud, chin chin. Oh, oh that's lovely. Yeah. This is Fresh, ex extremely light. dry, mm. very light. Yeah. Almost like a champagne, mm -hmm. but it's wine. But without the bubbles, yeah, yeah. exactly. So, uh, actually, Julian explained that this is slightly lower in alcohol, and it comes from grapes that have been grown around 800 meters above sea level, where there's just nothing but rock underneath. So they're actually quite dry, um, and they, yeah, they just produce this beautiful, light, dry white wine. And if you look at the color comparison to the one that we just had, which is very aged, you can see there. I'm just trying to... Mm, so one is, the one that we're drinking now is super light in color, and, and I think the color also reflects the taste, right? Nice yeah. and light. They're giving us the perfect wines to pair with the food, because I feel like this is a very like rich dish, mm -hmm. and then the dryness just cuts through all the, mm. the richness of this. I got to try uh, some of the fruits of Spain at the market the other day, and just the grapes were amazing. Mm -hmm. And like you said, they, they farm all their grapes like locally, so like the just the grapes in this is really fresh yeah natural really natural really fresh and actually that's something like you said earlier you know spain uh we don't really import wines most of the wines that you're going to drink in spain are from spain and spain has a, a whole variety of different wine producing regions that produce all kinds of different styles of wine and so all the wines we're trying today here are from within i'm going to say 50 miles of where we're sitting now so they will have been the grapes have been grown and they'd have been produced very very close to where we are uh, but look at the look at the variety we've got it's amazing like you know there's so yeah. many so many different types of wines that can be produced in a small area yeah it's crazy I, I feel like i'm just sitting in a, a wine cellar i'm not even in a restaurant i'm just eating within a wine cellar yeah That's how much wines they have here it is there are a <laughs> lot of wines here a lot of wines here mm -hmm. most of these vinotecas they always have a sommelier but Julian here is like a master sommelier and he has been pairing us these great vinos with these great dishes and he's hitting them head on but yeah that's what I just noticed about Spain in general if you go to like you know some of the better restaurants they always have sommeliers to you know pair wine with food the gastronomy scene here is different you don't just go to a wine bar to drink you don't go to a bar just to drink you drink and eat eat and yeah. drink and uh, I love that <laughs> yeah it's great it works great and um, I think everything food always tastes better with wine wine always tastes better with food in my opinion mm -hmm. and you're right yeah Julian is a, a master sommelier he's also a winemaker two of the wines that we've tried today come from his um, bodegas his wineries so yeah, as well as selling this incredible range of wines from all over Spain and all over Malaga, uh, he's producing his own. So he really knows what he's doing here in, here in Los Patios de Viata. And food and wine is better with people. So thanks, yeah. Hani, for Cheers. the tour. Pleasure. Great. If you guys can tell, I love this, this one right here. This so is Dan's good. favorite, the Seco Trasanejo. So yeah. Mm -hmm. The name of uh, this dessert is uh, Bien Mesabe. It's really typical uh, dessert in Malaga, in Antequera. Okay? We make like a, a sweet bread with a pumpkin, oh. almond, and uh, ice cream of uh, black uh, mango. Oh. And this is the perfume of uh, jasmine. It really smells like jasmine. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Love it. Wow. Enjoy Ooh, it. Beautiful. Thank you. Malaga dulce. Malaga dulce. Yes. Right now we're going to enjoy a sweet wine with this uh, popular and classic dessert. Mm -hmm. Well, classic. Classic. Yeah, classic. <laughs> we have the ice cream. It's becoming a classic. Yeah, we have the ice cream, and if you see the inside of the ice cream, you got the big surprise because the inside is black as the inside, but it's mango, the taste of it. 
Incredible. Wow. Okay. Beautiful. Uh, we're going to enjoy also a wine that originally is white. But if you see the color, it's caoba. Mm. That one is a Malaga Dulce, Malaga Sweet. Mm -hmm. It's a classic Malaga wine. This wine, when you taste it, is what the people drink it three centuries ago. Three well, centuries ago. Three centuries ago. That one is the classic recipe to do the Malaga sweet wine. The origin are the Muscat and the Pedro Jimenez grapes. So two grapes who grow on the top of the mountains. So again, mountain wine. Mm -hmm. They dry the grapes under the sun. Okay, so they concentrate mm -hmm. a little bit of the sugar, natural sugar of the grape. Mm -hmm. After that, they start the process to making the wine, fermentation process. Mm -hmm. When they are in the middle of the process, they stop the fermentation. So they just skip the natural sugar, okay, ah. into the wine. They add alcohol, spirit, brandy to fortify. What is fortified? Yeah, ah. so imagine. Uh, natural alcohol is seven. Yeah. Natural sugar is around 65 grams per liter. Mm -hmm. And they just add seven more percent, seven, eight percent alcohol to 45. Mm -hmm. And they just keep it no less than five years in case of oak. Is that why the color change into a beautiful color? Yeah. The nose is very ripe, aromas of molasses, mm -hmm. and also aromas of the oak. So with the bean mesabe, that is really almond taste also. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it'll be perfect. Great. To be paired. Salud. Cheers. How is it's it? It's amazing. Yeah? It's black, but it's pure mango. It tastes like pure mango puree. It's amazing. Try it. Traditional, right? There's a story behind this, why it's black. Yeah, it's a, it's a kind of fusion hybrid of different desserts here in Malaga. But the reason it's black is because it's presented like this for Semana Santa, which is Holy Week during Easter. It's a very moving week. It's to do with the Catholic religion, and they tell the story of, of the crucifixion of Christ really throughout these processions during the week. And Friday is a very dark, sad day when uh, Christ goes to the cross, and this dessert is presented to represent that, uh, that sad day. So actually, this dessert is served all year round here now, but um, it's, that, that's kind of where it came from. All right, let me try it out. Mango ice cream looks delicious. Oh man. Mango super f sweet. It's like a mango sorbet. Mm. Refreshing. It's confusing though, because it's black. <laughs> mm -hmm. But it's mango. Ooh. I thought these were like Oreo crumbs, but yes. they're like. <laughs> yeah. Don't think they're it's black. Oreo, but they're, yeah, they're black cookie crumbs. Yeah, cookie crumbs. Mm -hmm. mm. Nice touch. Oh, there's like a leaf on there. Mm-hmm. It kind of looks like the um, Canada maple. It does. Like it but it's black. And it's even got these little dots of something with beautiful, is that the focus? Yeah, yep. beautiful little flowers on. Yeah. Look how gorgeous that is. Handmade. So the cake, I mean, all kinds of ingredients in here, but one of the key ingredients, once again, are those beautiful local almonds. So I am dying to get and try this. Oh man, super moist. Mm. There's a little crunch from there. Are, mm. are those almonds? Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, so there's actually real almonds in there. Mm. I like that it's not too sweet. No. Perfect amount of sweetness. Cake is just amazing. So good. Really moist. Yeah. Mm, gorgeous. So, mm -hmm. last but not least, the Salud. dessert wine. Chin chin. Oh my goodness. Wow. Malaga Dulce. Malaga, Malaga Dulce. Sweet wine. That's so good. It's like a dessert <laughs> wine, but it's not it's not like too sweet. It's no. just really good amount of sweetness. And we just ate like a sweet cake. Mm. And the fact that I'm not like have an umami of sweetness in my mouth goes to show that it's perfect amount of sweetness. Yeah. It's and it's kind of so. thick too. It is, it's almost Caramely. syrupy. So Julian explained, yeah, and, and he said like notes of molasses, which I think you can get. So like kind of that like bittersweet of molasses. Um, but as he explained, this, this is actually made from white grapes. So the Moscatel and the Pedro Jimenez grape that this is made from are white grapes. But what they do is they leave them out in the sun. So they become almost like raisins before they turn it into the wine. That and makes so that's sense. that's where it gets that syrupy, kind of raisiny yeah. flavor from. Really fruity, 
goes beautifully with this. You definitely taste the raisins in here. Oh man. It's always, always got to end with dessert. There's always a great dessert at every spot. Mainly, usually, that the queso, cheesecake, but we've been getting great desserts almost at every spot. So yeah. you'll get the full dining experience in España. Yeah, actually it's true. And actually, Tarta de Queso is just taking off in Malaga, but it's not as popular down here as it is in the rest of Spain. So we have lots of alternatives to Tarta de Queso, mm -hmm. but we are definitely dessert people as well as savory people down here. Yeah. yeah. Mainly because it gives you an excuse to drink this wine. Although, I will say, we're having it with dessert as a dessert wine, but the people of Malaga, the Malagueños as we call them, will drink this Malaga Dulce as, also as an aperitif. Um, it gets Digestive. drunk at different times of day. Yeah, exactly. So you can have it at the beginning of the meal, at the end of the meal. It's very, very versatile, flexible wine. And it goes equally as well with salty pickles. In fact, I'm not going to say any more on that because we're going to try something mm. tomorrow. Yeah, stay we'll tuned. Show you that this has versatility. Yeah, well, we're going to be trying more food in Malaga, so make sure you guys stay yeah. tuned. We're on a two-day marathon here, Dan. Yep, Malaga <laughs> marathon. And this is 15% alcohol, too, guys. It's dangerous yeah. because this is so good. <laughs> mm. So easy to drink. Mm. The wine is flowing in Malaga. And the way to export was a wooden box. It was really large and thin. In fact, they call chatos. Okay, the name was chatos. So the label need to be also the same size of the of the wooden box. Wow. Okay. So we're getting a little history lesson on this tour as well. From what we're seeing on these pictures here, I'm understanding that Malaga used to be the world's biggest exporters of raisins, and um, you see a little bit of history through these pictures right here. All right, eating anywhere in Spain, especially these nice vinotecas. There's always so much history and details and layers to each restaurant. It's not just like a normal restaurant because these cities are so old. But uh, the owner was telling me that this used to be two houses, one in the 18th century, one in the 19th century. And he said that normally these houses has a little courtyard, which is right here where they have the dining room. And that's why there's so much natural lighting from above. But they just added the stained roof. So yeah dinner with the view and great vibes to go with your wine guys and so much artwork around here too i'm trying to capture all, like a lot of the wine for biro but i kid you not guys the video still doesn't even do it justice there's just so much wine bottles lying around in this vinoteca if you guys are a fan of wines spain is the place to be for sure so they have, they have these little urns on the floor where they age some of their wines look at this it's crazy so I guess this is how they used to do it in the Roman times. Looks really cool, traditional. So, did you enjoy that? That was honestly amazing. Great introduction to Malaga. There Thanks to Hanya here. My first spot, my first stop. Literally, I just got off the train and uh, yeah, great introduction so far. So can't wait to see what we have next. We have, we have a lot more in store. All right, stay tuned. All right guys, so we're at the oldest bar in Malaga where they serve all their wines in these barrels right here. Has a really old school feel. Let's check out the oldest bar in Malaga. Let's go. We are at the oldest bar in Malaga. Yeah. See? Gracias. Yeah. Looks really old school in here. There's wine barrels all around. And uh, there's a really cool system here. And Hany will tell us about it. Yeah, so we're in uh, La Antigua Casa de Guardia, which as you said, Dan, is the oldest bar in Malaga. It's been here since 1840. They still use some of the same um, systems that they were using back in the day. And one of them is that you order your wine 
and then they write your bill on the bar with chalk and when you leave they rub it off once you've paid very cool so we're gonna stack up the chalk here guys we are it's a, it's a mission we've chosen to accept all right so we're trying a pajarete pajarete exactly so this is a typical sweet malaga wine cheers dan let's give it a go dark in color Oh, it's um, very strong, mm -hmm. but at the same time sweet. Very sweet. Yeah, so it's uh, actually, you're right, Julian talked to us about this in Los Patios de Beatas. We've had versions of this kind of wine over the last couple of days. And it's created using a Pedro Jimenez grape, which is local to this area. And what they do is this, this uh, actually typic is, is uh, officially classed as a white wine. So the grape they use is a white grape. But what they do is they take it from the vine, put it in the sun so it dries out almost raisin-like before they turn it into the wine. And that's what gives it this deep color, this super fruity, sweet flavor. Yeah, it's very interesting that this is a white wine, but yeah, it's very, very dulce, sweet, mm -hmm. thick, deep. I like it though, it's really good. Yeah, it's kind of like a pudding wine, except we don't have it as well. That's not true. We will have this wine as a pudding wine, as an in-betweeny wine, with dinner, with food, without food. But generally, it's most typically consumed here in Malaga as an aperitif. Mm. So the aperitivo is a really important part of Malaga gastronomy, culture, Spanish food culture actually, which is that we have something small, a small wine and a small bite before we go out for lunch or dinner, which opens our digestive system, gets us ready to receive our delicious food. And I can attest to that, and I love that about Spanish culture. It's like trying a little bit of everything, like tapas, that culture, and even with the drinks, trying a little bit before every meal, a little bit after. It's been great so far. Yeah. It's been a great time in Malaga. Yeah. So this says on this barrel, we have cold pajarete. Uh, cold like your, cold like my ex's heart. <laughs> <laughs> I actually. Uh... Muchas gracias. <laughs> All right, so more delicious seafood. We are in a coastal city. All the seafood we've been having are very fresh, but uh, this is one of their uh, top sellers here, right? Absolutely, yeah. So everything that we eat in the Casa de Guardia with our sweet wines is going to be salty, fresh, cold, and this is no exception. Cold mussels steamed and just served with fresh lemon juice really go well with those sweet wines you do the honors got a huge piece of lemon i just squeeze it all over so no seasoning or anything it's just pure mussels with uh, lemon delicious so we also got uh, another drink to pair this with so he put some more chalk on the table it's a vermouth vermouth cheers so mussel. Really fresh, it's popped in your mouth. They have to be because all we did was put lemon in it. No, mm -hmm. no marinade or anything. So let's watch now some vermouth. Oh yeah. yeah. It's almost cinnamony, kind of has like a holiday type feel. It does, it really does. I always say that like in the UK, we drink mulled wine at Christmas. They don't drink it here in Spain. But it has those similar spices. So vermouth is a fortified wine. You're right, it has those spices in it. It will almost certainly have cinnamon in it. We'll have uh, star anise, cloves, maybe cardamom, whatever the individual recipe calls for. Extra booze added, lots of sugar, and citrus peel. So it gives it a really nice, like, bittersweet flavor. Very sweet. All right, when in Malaga, do us Malagan Zoo. All right, so after you pay, they raise your bill like it never happened. <laughs> We were not here. We've never been here. Yeah. Not drink too we were never. We were never here. No receipt, guys. No receipt of our uh, arrival. No. no. I'm just kidding. They did have a receipt. <laughs> this is not the 1920s. <laughs> Alright, so we're getting diverse on this Malaga tour. We're not just trying the traditional wines and stuff. We're going to be checking out this speakeasy called the Pharmacy for some cocktails. Back again. Alright. Uh, yeah, we're going to get some awesome cocktails in here. Alright, let's do it. Attention to detail. 
smell here? Nice. Ooh, it smells like the incense in a in a church. Yeah, it does smell a bit like incense in a church. Hola, ¿cómo estás? Oh, it doesn't matter where you are in the world, in typical speakeasy fashion, it's going to be a really interesting way to enter. So, I hear they have a doorbell here. Press, Press for, for cocktails. cocktails. All right, let's see. Let's see what happens. Let's see if someone will answer. Hope so. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. All right. We're allowed in. So, we're in luck. Let's check it out. Let's go. Wow, many speakeasy bars all around in the world. They all have different vibes, but a little bit similar touch as well. Very cozy, and it's a speakeasy, so shh. Ta-da. Oh, okay. All right, speaking of vibes, it's a speakeasy inside of a speakeasy, so more room to enjoy your drinks in this little delicate, intimate atmosphere in here pretty cool this is not just for art guys this is actually a real incense and i can smell the scents this looks like a willy wonka so this is our negroni it's a very classic recipe of the negroni the only difference is uh, we put some sherry wine in this cask it's little cask we have in this case oloroso wine we the uh, barrel was empty and then we put the negroni here for six weeks this is our version of the Negroni. It's still the classic Negroni. We like bitter, but with some cherry notes. Cherry notes, we give some sweetness and some dry nuts, dry nuts uh, flavor. And we're gonna put the Negroni here. When we're talking about uh, aged uh, cocktail, barrel aged cocktail, we need to give some oxygenation. We need some air, and this is the best way to keep the temperature low on the drink without giving a lot of water. This technique is from Boadas, it's very famous. Wow. The coordination. <laughs> and we're gonna serve it in a very nice thin glass with some homemade ice. The orange zest gives all these notes that we need. And we're gonna finish with a little orange button. More minimalistic cocktail. Yes, yes. Cheers. Okay, so we're at a Maligan Speakeasy, little cocktail bar right here, but with a twist, guys. That's uh, the theme of our tour. I really want to get, get a taste of Malaga and Southern Spain, and we got some of that in here. One of my favorite wines since I've been here has been the Jerez, the Sherry. Just love the flavors of it. So they made us a special cocktail with that wine. So this is a Negroni. Yes. Uh, it's a classic Negroni, except it's been aged in a barrel that has contained Oloroso, the sherry wine. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers, let's try it out. Oh, wow. <laughs> like yeah. that? It's a Negroni, so it still has like that bitter touch to it, but with the, the aging of uh, the Jerez, the, ch the sherry, it just gives it that nice natural sweetness. Yeah. It's really good. Flower. Electric flower. Like the flower that you're getting probably to the dream. It's a really crazy experience. <laughs> because we are, we are playing with the foam, because we have a foam, so the texture and the flavors really... And this is our drink, Nepali Gimlet. one of our best sellers. Nepali Gimlet. Nepali Gimlet. Salute. All right, we had a fun-filled day of, you know, eating and exploring Malaga. I got the true Andalusian experience here with Hanny. I want to give a special shout out to her. I reached out to her, I said, I'm coming to Malaga and I really wanted to, you know, try all the great things and see the city and she went above and beyond. Yeah, love this place. It was a great time. Uh, so I want to thank Hanny. I'll put all her links down below. Uh, she has her own tour company that shows you guys all around Malaga, like how she did with us. And yeah, great mm -hmm. time. So is there anything else you want to say to DVW oh, fam? Of course, thank you. Thank you for coming to Malaga. Thank you for shining beautiful light on this gorgeous city. Uh, thank you for trusting in me and of course thank you guys for watching. Awesome. Yeah.
So if you guys like this video, please like it. Comment down below where you guys want to see us next and subscribe for more DVW and follow Hanny for more food vlogs. Deuces. Deuces.